good right now. Several things going on at once. Look at those roasties, they're nice, aren't they? Mm. And there to keep them warm. Let me know when you're ready. I've been recording for 49 seconds. Ah, hi guys. Um, we're in the middle of all sorts of making a pie and that today, but the elderflowers are back in season now. So we've been collecting elderflower florets. So dad only wants the flowers and he needs about 15. Just want to mention this. We're collecting some as we walk back. Just along the towpath. Easy as that. They've got to be ripe, of course, flowering. I believe. But you don't mistake them for cow parsley, they look the same. <laughs> Here's a really good bush here, really good one. Um, and that's cow party down there, it's got a slightly yellow tone. And these are always a lot higher up. Oh, so you've got over there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I just want the flowers, I believe. You heated the whole bush yesterday. Yeah, about 15. I do, I think. Oh, they're not fully grown yet. They're making the flowering. A lovely smell of those. Right, so we're going to make some elderflower champagne. I've bleached this out uh, just to make sure that there's no germs or any bugs in there. Um, we don't wash the, the elderflowers because you wash all the natural yeast away. So, but make sure well, we I just want to mention quickly we did do this last year for our patrons. Yeah. Because we were doing exclusive uh, cooking videos for yeah. patrons, but everybody has been asking for more cooking videos, yeah. and we're doing more exclusive, different things on Patreon now. So we have the freedom to actually make some cooking videos for the channel, because we don't just do cooking videos on Patreon. Anymore. So we're gonna make, yeah. We're just gonna show you some of the things we get up to. We get up to all sorts of things, different things we I've, make. I went and picked those today. Yeah, and they smell there. lovely. Absolutely lovely. Fresher the better and you want them just as they've opened it up into flowers. There's several hundred flowers on each each one. You don't want them too old because then you won't get any of the flavour. But it's lovely this stuff, ice cold and it makes its own natural fizz. What we have to do every now and again is just burp the bottle to let the gas out. But anyway we start right back at the beginning. There's our bowl, there's our scales. Got normal sugar and um, we want to make this recipe, we're going to make, uh, I think it's roughly about three bottles or four bottles. It's on a smaller scale, but you can up this scale. So this is 800 grams we want of sugar. Can you do it in front of the gopher? It sounds a lot of sugar, and it is, but a lot of this sugar will turn into alcohol. The longer you leave it, the stronger it gets. All right, so we've got 800 grams exactly of granulated sugar. You can use caster sugar, any sugar you've got. I wouldn't use brown, though. At least half of that or more will turn into um, alcohol. It's not... After about two weeks, it's probably 2% two, uh, 2 alcohol. It's not going to get anyone drunk. Um, and the longer, like I say, the longer you leave it, the better it is. So now we're going to put boiling water into it. Do everything in front of the GoPro. Uh. Oop. I've got one hand. We've got two litres in the kettle. I measured it out of boiling water to dissolve the sugar. That's your first job. And I put this around the pot as well to kill any bacteria or any germs because your equipment has to be really clean. So that's our two litres in of boiling water and sugar. Now we're going to mix it up until the sugar dissolves. So it's like making jelly really at the beginning. Instead of dissolving jelly, you're dissolving sugar. Once all the sugar's dissolved, we're going to fill it up, measure out three litres of cold water. 
and then we're going to let it cool. We have to let it cool before we add any of the lemon zest and elderflowers. Because otherwise if we put the elderflowers and everything in boiling water it will kill all the natural yeast that we want. Otherwise we're going to have to put in our own yeast and I don't really like doing that. I like to use natural yeast. So now we're going to measure out cold water. So get a jug, cold water. Fill it up to the top mark on this. This is two litres, one of these. We need three litres of cold water. That's two litres. All the sugars dissolve now. And now we want another litre. I think let's just check. Yeah. Now we just give that a quick stir to get all the waters together. All the waters? All the waters. We've got boiling water and cold water. But they separate. Oh yeah, mix them up. Mix all the hot and the cold water together. Now that is like warm. Just warm, warm now. Yeah. So we're going to leave that there and let that cool down and we'll come back to you when we start putting the elderflowers and the lemons in. Thanks for watching. Right, we're just going to get the zest off these lemons. It's not quite cold enough yet, but I'm going to get the zest off. Now you can either get it off with a grater, but I've found using this... You didn't realise you can show it to the GoPro. Oh yeah. It's not on though. Yes, it is. Oh, you've got it on, have you? Yeah, just done. Um, just using this, it's a bit tough with this, but it's great because I can just get pieces of zest off without worrying too much. But you, like I say, you can. You don't. You only want the zest. You don't really want the pith because otherwise you'll get a bit of flavour. So that's it. There's the zest off of that lemon, or you can use a grater and grate it. This is perfect for it, because it doesn't go right down to the pith. It's just, it's like, the only way to explain elderflower champagne is like homemade lemonade, but with a little bit of that elderflower flavour to it. It's just lovely on a hot day. People add it to gin or vodka. add mint to it. Mint and what else could you add to it? You could add mint to it and rum to it and this to it and have and some have a mojito or something like that. But you were talking about them the other day, weren't you? Mm. Oh, I do like this. These lemons are lovely <coughs> from a local discount shop. Mention so any names? Make, I can't mention any names. I don't know why. <laughs> don't know, can you? Well, you might be able to, yeah. Just Aldi's. <laughs> don't know why you wouldn't be able to. I find the produce in Aldi, these aren't waxed either, these lemons. They're unwaxed. You pay more for waxed lemons because they look beautiful and shiny. Mm. But you want unwaxed. Wax, wax is no good for this sort of thing. So we can, now this is like just warm, we can put this lemon zest in now while it's warm. And that will give it, um, because it's warm, it will allow the zest to come out. But we still can't put our elderflower in yet. So that's the zest in, floating around. Oh, already you can smell it. Right, come back to you in a minute. We've got our lemon zest in now guys and then we're just going to squeeze in the juice from four lemons. So the zest from four lemons and the juice from four lemons. I'm just doing it by hand. Always have done. Always will. So you can use an orange or lemon squeezer. Get all that nice juice in. Another one. Of course, if you want to make more than this, you can double up the recipes. I like making it in batches because 
it's quite a lot to handle when you do a load of it. You've got to have a lot of bottles ready and see all this lovely juice going in. We've got a sieve over it as well to stop the pips going in. These are really nice and juicy. Last one. Right, now we just lift that up and all we're left with is the pips. I get the pips out. And then, well I have grown lemon trees out of these before. Pips out. I'm going to siphon this anyway when it comes to the end. And then what I'm after is those lovely lemon bits. All the little bits that have broke off have gone in. So it gives you a nice little lemons going through the mix. Right, so we're going to go for, it asks for eight heads, but I always put more in because I want the yeast. One, two, three, four, and only pick the best heads, so I won't use all of them. Five, six. I like this because if you pick seven, if you pick different heads from different bushes, you end up with some really nice flavours because not all of them have got the same smells and same flavours depending on where they're grown. That's eight. I'm going to put a couple more in because I like the lovely flavours of the elderflower. Don't put too many in. Nine. 10. I've got 10 there. I'm going to go for one little one. There. If you go for too many, it gets a bit sloppy in there, it makes it quite thick. And if it does do that, then you just need to water it down. And then we just stir all this in. And that is it. That's the start of it. And then we'll cover it up with a clean tea towel. Or clean film, I'll probably use, if I've got enough clean film there, clean film. Um, after a couple of days you have to take the clean film off or put a hole in the clean film. Because it starts to ferment and the clean film goes like a balloon. So you can either put a little hole in the middle or you can just put a clean tea towel over the top. And we're going to leave that for about three or four days now and see how it goes. And we'll update you near the time. It needs to be somewhere warm. Like that. It's quite warm in the boat now. And that will help the uh, fermenting process. Once this is fermented, and then we've bottled it, it can be as quick as a week and you can be drinking it. So it's nice to capture the seasons. Isn't it, Josh? Mm. Right, so we'll come back to you guys when this is fermented and we're going in our bottling up process. And all we use for that is empty bottles like Coke bottles, like these. We save these, we put a bit of mint in, in there or something like baby bottle um, uh, steriliser, sterilise the bottles, and then we'll be filling up these. We're back to carry on and bottle up. How many up. days has it been? Four, five, aren't there? About, probably about four days, yeah. I've stirred it up, I've given it a stir, but there was foam and everything in amongst the flowers here, which tells me that uh, there's some there as well. Tells me that something's been happening. So we're going to um, bottle it up now. So I've got a jug. Oh, there it is, I've got it out already. 
there's your sieve and the sieve into a jug Smells lovely already. And then into bottles. Try not to use water bottles, use these fizzy bottles because they're stronger and you, it will get the whole gas out within a few days. And then you've got to, we'll show you how to do it. You just got to keep opening the lid that will be all like the lemon juices and that and elderflower juices, so it's nice to have it in there. So that's it bottling up. Mm. So it's really easy this recipe. Really easy drink to, to make. And you know what's going on in it. Some people put citric acid in it, but I don't think you need citric acid. Citric acid just stabilizes it all. It's like a preservative. But I've never used citric acid in it. Right, so I'll leave a gap at the top. So the gas is to expand. Why I have to remove the label? I don't like it on there. Leave it for about a week in the bottle and it'll be ready to drink. It's actually ready to drink now as a cordial, but the week the fizz takes about a week to develop the sparkle. So we leave it for about a week for it to sparkle. If you think you're not going to get a sparkle, you can add um, champagne yeast to it or sparkling white wine yeast to it. They're easy to get on and get them in most supermarkets. But I don't I've never had a problem with it. And it's just like a cordial at the moment before the gas comes on. What you need to do is check the bottles and you'll notice the bottles will get hard. At the moment I can press it, but over a few days that will get hard. So you need to loosen this and let any gases out. You have to keep checking them quite regular, otherwise the bottle can explode. But already I can there's a slight sparkle to that already, so the magic's happening. But it's absolutely delicious, just like this. Just as a cordial. If you've got, yeah, you got diabetes, don't have it. But the sugar, half the sugar, will turn into alcohol. So as the gas produce, um, as the gas is produced, that's the sugar turning into alcohol, and it produces um, gases, nitrogen and carbon monoxide and stuff. So. The longer you leave it, the less sugar there is in there. But thanks for watching, guys. That's our elderflower champagne recipe, and more recipes to follow. Mm -hmm.